Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا That man was created impatient. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا When good comes to him, he's stingy. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا And when evil comes to him, his soul, he becomes so worried. Then Allah Azzawajal says, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّي Except for those people who pray and they preserve their prayers. You might say you have so many sins, as you said earlier, and this is why I don't pray. Well, listen to this story where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam walks with Abu Dhar radiyallahu anhu, and it was like a time where the leaves were falling. So Abu Dhar says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took one of the uh, one of the branches of the trees. And he shook it, alayhi salatu wasalam, until all the leaves fell off. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to Abu Dhar that, O oh Abu Dhar, so Abu Dhar said, Labbayk ya Rasulullah, this is a way of expressing your respect to the person who's calling you. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told him that whenever a believing servant prays a prayer, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sins will fall just like these leaves falling from this branch of the tree. In another narration it was said that when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of your sins will be brought and will be put on your back. But when you make ruku' they will fall off. When you bow, they will fall off. When you prostrate to Allah azza they will fall off. And by the end of the prayer, all of your sins will be forgiven. Well, did you know that by you neglecting your prayer, you're harming the whole Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ? It's not just only you that you are harming by this. You are harming all of the nation of the Prophet ﷺ. Are you happy with the situation of the Muslims in Palestine? Are you happy with the situation of the Muslims in Iraq? Are you happy with the situation of Muslims everywhere? Or you want to change that? You know what Allah Azza just says in the Quran? ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ That corruption have appeared in the land and in the sea. Why? Because of what people's hands have earned. I don't think I would ever forget that fatwa that I heard once from Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah. Someone said to him that, Oh Shaykh, I neglect like Salat al-Fajr. I do not pray Salat al-Fajr and so forth. You know what the Shaykh told him? He said, fear Allah Azza wa Jal in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By you doing this, you're harming everyone in the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you really want to help the Muslims, start by praying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Do you like to live your life in darkness? Or would you like to live this life in complete light? Would you like to come on the Day of Judgment with light flowing all over around you? Or would you like to come on the Day of Judgment with darkness? The Prophet ﷺ says that هذه الصلوات, these daily prayers, من حافظ عليهن كانت له نورا وبرهانا يوم القيام. It will be a light and an evidence for him on the Day of Judgment. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُحَافِظْ عَلَيْهِنْ And for those who do not preserve them and take care of them, and before I finish this hadith, I'm going to tell you a short story and then I'm going to finish the hadith. When I was in the university, I had a friend of mine. I asked him, Brother, how did you start practicing Islam? Why did you start praying? Why did you start practicing Islam? He said, you know what? Actually, it was a dream that I had. I said, what is that dream? He said, I had a dream that I was sitting in something just like a conveyor belt. Like the ones you see in the airport. He said, I was sitting in that thing. And in front of me were some people. And behind me, there were also some people. And this thing 
keeps dropping the people into the fire of hell. It's going towards the fire of hell and it keeps dropping the people in hellfire. So he said, I asked the person in front of me, I said, who are you? This is obviously a dream. So he said, I asked him, who are you? He said, I am Fir'aun. He said, I looked behind me and I said, who are you? He said, I am Haman, the helper of Fir'aun. And he said, I was sitting in the middle between these two most evil people going towards the hellfire. Imagine if this was a reality. Alhamdulillah that it was a dream. He said, I woke up and I said, that's it. I have to repent to Allah. And this is how I started praying. SubhanAllah, when he said that story, I remember this hadith of the Prophet That if you preserve these prayers, they are going to be a light and an evidence for you on the day of judgment. And if you do not take care of these five daily prayers, they are not going to be a light nor would they be an evidence for you on the day of judgment. And on the day of judgment, you're going to be gathered with Fir'aun, with Haman, and with Ubay ibn Khalaf, a third disbeliever. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said, believe it or not. These are the people that you will accompany. And he was talking to Muslims at his office. SubhanAllah, obviously you don't need dreams to start praying. But many people, subhanAllah, the reason why they started to practice Islam was because of a dream that they saw. Like another one of my brothers said that, that there is a story of a man, he didn't used to pray. So he had a dream that someone sent him a fax. And in that fax it said, 24434. And it says to him, Ya Abdullah, Ittaqillah, O servant of Allah, fear Allah. Two, four, four, three, four. When I woke up, he said, I remember that dream and I said to myself, two, four, four, three, four. These are the rak'ahs of the salawat that I'm not performing. And then he started praying his five daily prayers. Well, you might not receive a dream, right? But you know from the reality that you are obligated to uh, pray these five daily prayers. What if someone did you something very simple? Like for example, you're carrying so many things and another person comes and he says, let me help you and he helps you with something. You feel that this person did me a favor and I should at least say to him, thank you. What about Allah Azza wa who provided you with this sight by which you can see? He gave you these ears by which you can hear. He gave you these kidneys that work 36 times a day and many people didn't have that what about every single blessing that Allah Azzawajal blessed you with what about the fact that Allah Azzawajal guided you to know that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad Sallallahu is the messenger of Allah don't you have to thank Allah Azzawajal at least for these things how long does every prayer take? Does it take more than seven minutes or eight minutes? Is it too much to give Allah Azza wa from 24 hours, 40 minutes every day? To say just to say to Allah Azza wa thank you for all of these blessings that you have given me. This salah brings the person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَعْدٍ that you'll be in the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are making sujood to Allah azza wa And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, ask Allah and inshallah Allah azza wa will answer your prayers. When you are making, when you are prostrating to Allah, you'll be in the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ advised him. He said, make much sujood, prostration to Allah azza wa For whenever you make a sajda, a prostration to Allah Azza wa Jal, He will raise you a rank, and that Allah Azza wa Jal will wipe away from you a bad deed. Have you seen some people who might be working in uh, in some place where they get dirty from just working physically, their hands and so forth? The Prophet Sallallahu gave a beautiful example. He said, "Imagine a person like that." But this person passes every day by five rivers. Would any filth stay on him? 